My beloved brothers and sisters, we were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He alone knows why He created us. Some might find it absurd that a human being like us created with such a sophisticated brain, with such beautiful posture, with such organs that are unmatched, and yet he or she only lives for a few years on earth and disappears. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a believer, has responded to questions that may arise and have arisen as to why he created us. Where were we before he made us? And where is it that we are going to go? Because it is only with that knowledge that you begin to truly enjoy and cherish the life on this earth with its problems, with its hardships, with its difficulties, because you're a believer. If you do not believe and you do not want to look into what Allah himself has said about where you were, where you are and where you are going, you will never be able to understand and you won't enjoy truly because for you, it will be a rat race throughout your life. You will be running behind things that do not have deeper pleasure than a few moments. And this is why it's important for us to constantly lead our lives within the pleasure of Allah. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we know this verse, we've heard this verse, we understand this verse. It means, I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me, except for them to worship me. When we hear this verse, many people think, what exactly does this mean? All it means is, I want you to lead your life exactly as I told you to lead it. You need to fulfill the obligations and stay away from the prohibitions. So fulfilling obligations, mashallah, we know, a lot of us know, we are here today, Masjid Nur in Abuja, on this beautiful day of Friday, at this beautiful time of Jumu'ah, we have gathered in order to fulfill an obligation on us, because we know it's an obligation. But many of us do not realize that the sins that Allah has declared as being major, the sins that Allah has declared as being the worst, those which will affect you most on earth and even in the hereafter, they are things that we do not talk about often. And sometimes we don't want to correct ourselves in that regard. We find many people outwardly very pious. They will do five salah, but they have a problem of the bottle. They have a problem of adultery. They have a problem of pornography. They have a problem of something else. They have a problem of gambling. So many other issues. So it's important that we look into some of the worst of the sins that Allah says are the most dangerous, most damaging, most harmful in order for us to protect ourselves. But before I commence with mention of two hadith for today's lecture, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, remember something. Islam is a religion based on the mercy and forgiveness of Allah. Don't ever forget that. Islam is a religion based on the mercy and forgiveness of Allah. Evidence of it is in the very opening of the Quran. Evidence of it is when you start to read the Quran, you are taught to say something. What is it? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amazing. Think about those words that you've just said in the name of Allah. The most merciful, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, whatever the term mercy includes. There are two types of mercy being made mention of here. One is specialized for the believers and one is general even for the non-believers. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Then, when you start the Quran, what do you say? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. Notice the same two qualities came back. This goes to prove to you and to, and to myself and to all those who would like to know that Islam is a religion based on the mercy and forgiveness of Allah. It always, it always, amazes me how Allah created Adam. May peace be on him. 
and all of us. And how Allah told him not to do one thing and that is the exact thing he did. Subhanallah. And Allah says, I will still forgive you. I heard a few words and you sought forgiveness, forgiven. Let's start a new leaf on earth. And every time you or your children do something like this, you need to also seek forgiveness exactly like this. So now we're on earth. We will try our best to obey the commands. But let's talk about the prohibitions. Ijtanibu sab al mubiqat. The Prophet sallam. Hadith authentic narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He says, and he was serious about it. Stay away from the seven most destructive sins. Most destructive sins. What type of destruction? Wallahi on earth as well as in the hereafter. Now I told you already, when you seek forgiveness, you will be forgiven by Allah. When you ask Allah's mercy, he will grant you the mercy. So if you have engaged in any sin between you and Allah, you will be forgiven. Remember that. When a person commits shirk, people say he will never be forgiven. That's not true. The Quran speaks about shirk not being forgiven for the one who has passed away on shirk and did not seek forgiveness. As for the one who sought forgiveness from any sin between him and Allah, Wallahi, it is forgiven. Wallahi, it is forgiven. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum in Mecca, the Muhajirun prior to their Islam, what were they? They were mushrikeen. They committed shirk that we would not even think of at times. They used to worship things that we or some of our forefathers, limited forefathers have not even done. They are forgiven. Why? Because they changed their lives. They sought forgiveness. If you change your life and seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive even shirk. Don't misinterpret the verse where Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah will never forgive shirk, but He can forgive anything besides that, whatever He wishes. That is referring to a person who dies without seeking forgiveness, without turning to Allah, and without changing his or her life. Indeed. Which means still Allah can forgive someone who did not repent for any sins besides shirk. What is shirk? Association of partnership with Allah in worship. You worship someone, something besides Allah or with Allah. That is known as shirk. So the first one from the major destructive sins where the Prophet ﷺ says, stay away from seven types of sins that are very destructive, the most destructive sins in this world and the next. Ijtanibu as-sab'a al-mubiqat. Those that would result in your punishment in this world and the next. Destructive. The first one, ashirku billah. Stay away from associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have, turn back to Allah. If there is ever any act that you are doubting, you rather leave it out than to engage in something that might just be wrong. Because those acts of worship Allah wants you to engage in, they are enshrined very clearly. As for those that are not clear, you can actually leave them out. It won't be a problem. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you what you need to know in clarity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. The second one, you will be surprised, as-sihru. Magic, to engage in magic, to participate in black magic, to ask for it, to go and seek it, and to be a party of it. All of that is considered al-mubiqat from among those sins that are extremely destructive in the dunya and the akhirah. Why? The Prophet Muhammad says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Whoever casts a spell has associated partners with Allah. My brothers, my sisters, it is rampant across the globe. Now it is becoming more where people are participating in magic to get things. Subhanallah, people are engaging in magic thinking that by us doing something like this, we are going to achieve goodness, not realizing you are cutting the umbilical cord between you and Allah in a figurative way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Never ever resort to magic or some superstitious dealings in order to achieve something or in order to destroy something. Never do that. It is too costly. It will cost you your Jannah. It will cost you your relation with Allah. Don't do it. Don't go to someone to say, I have a problem. I want to marry a married woman. I need you to cast a spell so that they are divorced. 
People are doing this. And you know what? They are not happy after that as well. Because shaitan dangles a dirty carrot, not realizing that you will achieve nothing from this. Besides, shaitan telling Allah, you see, I told you. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Shaytan on the day of judgment will tell Allah, O oh Allah, or in fact Shaytan will say, that Allah has promised you a true promise and I just gave you a false promise. You are the one who listened to me. I didn't force you to do anything. You came to me with, a, with I had a false promise. You left Allah who had the true promise and now you are here, you are stuck. Don't blame me, blame yourself. That is shaitan's statement. So my brothers and sisters, we need to talk about this. Magic is something that if a person participates in it in any way, shape or form, they are compromising their relationship with Allah and even destroying it. But if a person seeks forgiveness from Allah, he will forgive them. So if you have done something in the past, seek Allah's forgiveness. Al-Ishraqu Billah was sih then he says, وَقَتْلُ النَّفْسِ الَّذِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ To commit murder. If a person kills someone directly or indirectly, it is a massive major sin. Because innocent lives are not meant to be taken by people. Vigilantism is not permissible in Islam. You cannot take the law in your own hands and start killing people and hurting people and harming people and thinking, I'm doing a good job. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So imagine this hadith starts off with seven major things. The first three, we hear about them. Al-Shirk, Al-Sihr, and murder. So one is association of partnership with Allah, one is magic, and one is murder, to commit murder. Now you want to hear something dangerous that is following that. Aklu riba wa aklu mali yatim to consume usury and interest, to consume it. Sometimes you may have an amount of interest in your account because of the financial system that you might be living in, depending on what environment, what country you are in and what the laws are, etc. You take that amount and you give it away to the poor Muslims. No problem. But it's not your amount. You don't eat it. You don't eat it. Aklur riba. To eat that is wrong. To consume that is considered minal mubiqat from among that which is very dangerous for you, sinful. It will cause some downfall of yours in this world and the next. And what is worse, let's not talk about bank accounts only. We talk about people who are wealthy. They give their money to someone and they tell them, I need back with 20% more. You say, but isn't that interest? No, it's a profit. What type of a prophet is this? They will call it any name, but it is still interest. Unless they are willing to participate in your business and share the loss, if any, then we are talking business. Otherwise, let's learn from our scholars. And we have many scholars here in Nigeria. Let's learn from our scholars the details. Let's continue to learn because the financial markets and the laws of economics have changed over time and they are continuing to change with different types of currencies and so on. We need to be up to date, knowing what's right and wrong from those who have knowledge of that. If you were to ask me certain things, I will tell you, brother, I have not specialized in that field. Let's find a scholar who has specialized in the field, who knows current day markets, who will be able to talk to you as an economist and explain to you logically and properly what Allah allows and what he does not allow. Sometimes you go to a person who doesn't really know about international markets. They will make everything haram for you and it will become impossible to live. And then you might go to someone who's not really bothered about Islamic rules and they will say, brother, just eat. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We need a balance. We need someone who knows and someone who can teach us and guide us. So it's important to participate in the lessons of this nature that happen not only in this masjid, but I'm sure in many other circles of knowledge. 
So aklu riba is something that is very serious. Then we have aklu mali yatim, the consumption of the wealth of an orphan. Do you know what that means? When someone dies and you are somehow connected to that estate, to execute that estate properly and to ensure that the dues are given to all those, the widows, the orphans, etc. in a proper manner, that is something that Allah has enshrined with a lot of importance. And it is a major sin to be corrupt in that. It's a major sin to cheat and to steal from the widows and orphans. Someone who's innocent, the father has passed away, someone else has passed on. You are made a trustee or you are entrusted with their wealth. Please make sure that you are honest. The, the Quran in Surah An-Nisa at the beginning has verses directed to this in a clear way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Then the Prophet ﷺ continues to mention something. He says, The day of the war to run away without the instruction of the commander is a major sin. In fact, there is a verse of the Quran that tells that to us. At a time of war, when you are a warrior and you are going forth to fight the enemy, to run away or to turn back from that, and without the instruction of the commander, you would actually be considered a person who engaged in a major sin. What happens to a believer when he is in a war zone and he has to fight on to protect the ummah or his people or whoever else it may be? One of two good things happen to him. Either there is victory on the ground, so we are victorious, or... He is considered a martyr because he lost his life and he will get Jannah. Was there a loss? In actual fact, for a believer, there was no loss. The idea here is to strengthen the warriors, to tell them, you do not go back. Make sure you follow the instructions of the commander. You know the battle of Uhud. Some of the people did not follow the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ and they came down from a certain hillock where they were supposed to be guarding. And that caused a lot of destruction for the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And the last one from those seven that we will talk about today, it's in the hadith. Ijtanibu as sabah al mubiqat. Remember the term as sabah, it means the seven. Al mubiqat means those sins that are very detrimental and damaging against you in your deen, your dunya, your akhirah, in your life and the hereafter. The last one is qadh. Al-Muhsanat, Al-Mu'minat, Al-Ghafilat. To falsely accuse the believing females who are innocent of the sin you are accusing them of, primarily immorality. People today come out and say, that one is having an affair with this one, this one is having an affair. What did you see? You just saw them talking together. What else did you see? You saw one message on the phone. What else did you see? And you know how far your accusation went? Subhanallah. I'm not condoning messages on the phones, but I'm telling you, if the Prophet ﷺ says, be careful about accusing others of immorality, then you need to know it's a serious sin. It happened at the time of Rasulullah ﷺ, Surah An-Nur has in it verses that have clarified accusations against our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha. That was not for nothing. Allah says, the one who started all of it, the main man who was behind the accusation against Aisha radiallahu anha, he will have a severe punishment. But more than that, everyone who spread the tale, everyone who enjoyed the gossip is going to be punished because of what they have done, what they have earned. So there are two things we need to know. Never accuse someone of something, especially when it comes to immorality, because false accusation is something major. And secondly, never become a person who enjoys gossip, because then you will be carrying tales. And when you carry tales, naturally, you will carry something that is wrong, and you will earn an equal portion of the sin based on what you have done. So that is the one hadith that speaks about the major sins or the sins that we have been warned about. Al-Muhlikat, they will destroy you. 
But before I end, there is one more hadith that I must speak about because it only has three categories in it and already we have spoken about some of them. The Prophet ﷺ one day, he says, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ It's a hadith of Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu. He says, should I not inform you of the biggest of sins? And so he said, Ashirku billahi. He started off with the same one that was in the previous hadith. Then he says, Uququl walidain. Subhanallah. What is the meaning of Uququl walidain? Well, the translation of it would include to be disrespectful or hurtful or abusive towards your parents. It does not mean obedience because obedience is confined to what is within what Allah has ordained. Which means if your parents are asking you to do something Allah has prohibited, you cannot obey them. Even if they say you are now doing uquq, you will tell them, my father, this is not uquq. This is actually doing you a favor. I'm not going to buy your alcohol for you because Allah has disallowed that. Subhanallah. I'm just giving you an example. So be kind towards your parents. Be dutiful towards them. Speak to them in a respectful way even when you disagree with them. Speak in a very beautiful way. Don't abuse them. It's the second sin from Akbarul Kabair. You need to memorize it and know it and talk about it because the new generations seem not to give a damn about their parents and the status of parents. And the last one, the Prophet ﷺ was lying down when he mentioned these two. Then he sat up. In one narration, his face changed. And he says, Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Do you know what that means? Behold, to utter that which is of false witness, that which is false and to bear false witness, to utter falsehoods and to bear false witness. Didn't we say earlier, one who bears false witness is engaging in a major sin when we accuse others. But this is more encompassing in that sometimes you are lying about something, whether it is in a court or not in a court. If it is in a court in front of the judge, it is even worse. But even if it is not there and you are bearing false witness, subhanallah, it is a major sin. The Sahaba say he kept repeating this, these words. Allah wa zur. He kept repeating them until we felt. We hope he keeps quiet now. He continued to repeat them until we felt. But we hope he keeps quiet. My brothers, my sisters, I end on this note to say. Let us make sure we are always truthful. If you have lost something because of your truthfulness, Allah will replace it with a million things. And if you have gained something because of your falsehood, Allah will replace it with a million regrets that you may have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness and open our doors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to abstain from sin. And to seek forgiveness all the time. For indeed, the one who is successful is the one who continues to seek the forgiveness of Allah. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent unto Allah, all of you, O believers, in order that you achieve true success. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَنَفَعَنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِمَّا مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِي هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْف